Hey guys, Nico from the Survive the Dead PvE Scum server. Just wanted to do a quick roll through on the G Portal server settings because when I was setting up our server, I wasn't able to find really good information on a lot of these settings. Now they have improved some of the descriptions, but a lot of them are still ambiguous. So you're gonna see me skip over a lot of things, but I do wanna point some of this stuff out. First of all, when you sign into your G Portal server, you're gonna get greeted with your status page. And you're gonna see basic stats like your game server load and the amount of RAM available to you. It's also gonna show you the most recent update on your server, mine is from February 12th, which is the most recent hotfix. I would suggest having auto update turned on, which is available right here under administration, because it makes sure your server is always up to date and if your server is not up to date, it can cause a lot of problems, especially with players being able to sign in. So we're gonna go over to basic settings here, and this is what I really wanna go through. A lot of this is self-explanatory, but some of it further down gets a little confusing. So you have your server name, password if you wanna set one. If you want anybody to be able to hop on, I wouldn't recommend a password. How many slots you've got, your welcome message, which greets people when they hop in your server. Your message of the day, which will play at a minute interval that you set here below. Time to remain in game after game leave request. I've set that to three seconds. The default setting is 10. 10 seconds was a little too long for me. Uh, the seconds after you hit escape and exit are important for two reasons. One, they allow you to cancel your exit in case you forgot to do something, and two, it gives your game session time to close out properly so you don't have any problems in the future. Max allowed animals, the maximum number you can put here is 100. This is how many animals can be on your map at one time. I have it maxed out because I like hunting them and some of my players do too, so that gives us a better opportunity. Max allowed birds, same kind of thing. Max allowed sentries are your mechs. I have mine set at one because I have a good mixture of some decently sized squads, and also some lone wolf players. When I had the sentries, or the mechs, set to a higher number, my lone wolf players would sometimes get cornered in POI by multiple mechs, and it wasn't really working out very well. So this way I still have the thrill and the, the fear of the mechs on the map, but a little more G-rated. Max allowed drones, these are the little silver balls that like to follow us around and record our lives for the Scum TV show. I set it to three just because. Max allowed zombies, the maximum number you can put here is 500. I just increased this today from 150 to 175 because I do have more players on the server now and it was starting to feel a little sparse. Max allowed wild pawns, exterior pawns, and interior pawns are how many puppets can spawn in certain areas in total across the map. So I have 30 that can spawn in the wild, so say in the forest, in the fields. 75 that can spawn in exterior, that's going to be ones that are spawning outside of buildings and outside of bunkers in POI. And 70 that are allowed to spawn interior, that's going to be inside of buildings and inside of bunkers. And these are, again, across the entire map. Start time of day, it's kind of an asinine number. I choose 8, 8 in the morning. Seemed like a good time for dawn. You can choose whatever you like. Time of day speed has a, diff has a, a pretty decent explanation here. I have it set to 1, which is a 6-hour day cycle. And the way the day cycles work is they are broken into thirds. So my day cycle would be 2 hours of day, 2 hours of night, 2 hours of day for one cycle. The next one would be two hours of night, two hours of day, two hours of night, and so forth. Max ping, I left at the vanilla setting of 255. You can raise it, you can lower it. Once you start getting above that, you start having issues with lag and rubber banding, and it just ends up being not the best experience. Time between events, minimum and maximum. This is for your airdrops. This is basically how soon after an airdrop explodes will another airdrop appear. I like to have a lot of airdrops on the map, so I set the minimum to a minute, maximum to three. So after an airdrop explodes, between one and three minutes later, there will be a new one being announced. Cargo drop fall delay and duration. Delay is how long between the message popping up on the screen and the cargo drop actually appearing. Duration is how long the cargo drop spends falling. 
So if you were to stand there and watch it, how long would it take for you to see it and then see it hit the ground? I set the duration to left less than 15 seconds before, and it kind of came out ridiculous. It was more like a bomb or a meteor coming down, but feel free to set that to whatever you like. Self-destruct time, the default is 20 minutes or 1200 seconds. I left it alone because it seems like it works. Your storm probability actually has a pretty decent explanation, but the essential meaning of it is zero to one is going to be more intense, more frequent storms, with zero being endless torrential rain. 1.1 to 1,000 is going to be less intense, less frequent storms. Your kill notifications and claiming there. Your lists, the big guys here are the reserved player list and the exclusive join list. Reserved player list is the players that can get onto your server even when it's full. And the way that works is it actually kicks another player from their slot disconnects them from your server, and you essentially steal their slot. Now myself and the other server owner are on this list specifically for one reason. If there is some sort of catastrophic crisis on the server and I have to get on immediately, I need to have the ability to do so. I have no intention of ever stealing another player's slot. Your exclusive join list is kind of similar but essentially what it does is instead of kicking a player from a slot and taking it over, it indefinitely holds an open slot for anyone that you put in this list. So I have 20 slots available right now. If I were to put someone in this list, it essentially gives me only 19 slots for others to join the server. Your admin list, we have three administrators on our server. We all have God mode because we do like to use it to set up events that are admin run or to build little cantinas and things for the players to enjoy from time to time. Uh, one of our admins recently streamed his base building adventure that he did two weeks ago after we did our server wipe. And he managed to build himself a floating base just before the update that came along and prevented anyone from doing that anymore. Your ban list obviously are Steam64 IDs that cannot join your server anymore. The vast majority of these were banned because they would not join our Discord server, which is the only requirement we have of people on the Survive the Dead server. For two reasons. I am not trying to be a dictator, but I need you to know the rules and I need to be able to communicate with you. Save zones are new. They're pretty interesting. It has a little bit of an explanation up here, but it is still a bit confusing. Basically, you're going to put the center of your circle in XY coordinates here. Choose your radius. 0 0.1 is a 100 meter radius. Uh, each sector is 9,000 square meters, so you have to do a pretty large radius to cover the map. I actually set our map yesterday to have no explosive damage. And in order to cover the entire map, I changed the radius to 1,000. Probably didn't need to be that much, but I did it just for the fun of it. You can obviously turn off a lot of different types of damage here. Boxing, melee, throwing, projectile, which is your guns. Uh, explosive damage to bases, vehicles, puppets, and lock picking. Turning off explosive damage, which is what I did yesterday because one of our players died from a mine, that a banned player had placed before he was kicked, will also disable damage from suicide puppets. So your bombies or beepers, or whatever you like to call them, will no longer hurt. We didn't like that very much because they make the game a little more exciting. So I actually removed the save zone across the map in order to restore the bombie damage. Once you have all that set up, you want to hit add right here and all your choices will be displayed in a new little sliver ribbon down here. You can add as many of those as you want, different sectors, different areas, however you want to set it up. Your spawners is where it starts getting tricky. So you have your regular spawners, which are the vicinity spawners. They're the ones when you walk into a room and there's something sitting on the floor or on a table. Your examine spawners are the ones where you have to search an item to see the loot, so a chest or a cabinet. The expiration time is how frequently these spawners renew their loot. I have mine set to 0.3, which is an hourly representation 
in this case, 20 minutes. Your spawner probability multipliers, this is your loot quantity. So I have a high loot server, not a max loot server. I have mine set to nine, which seems to provide a decent amount of loot, even if some of it's junk like hats and rag strips. You can set this to pretty much any number you want. I've set this to 100 million before. I will say that there is a noticeable difference between one and 10, not much of a noticeable difference over 10. So I call 10 max loot. Interior and exterior spawner group cooldown times. This is how soon puppets respawn. So if I were to say go into a bunker and eliminate all the puppets, it would take them 15 minutes or 900 seconds to respawn. Sentry and zombie damage multipliers. I turned these down because again, I have both decent sized squads and lone wolf players. And I wanted to have a decent number of puppets and also have this, the sentries, the mechs, but also not make it so difficult that a lone wolf would end up getting just slaughtered. So I turned down the damage on the sentry. Um, used to be at one, which used to be pretty much a one-shot kill, if he got you right. He'll still kill you, but it takes a few shots. Same thing with the zombies. They'll still kill you. It just takes a little bit longer. Human-to-human -human damage I changed because this is a PvE server. I did not turn it off entirely. Uh, I did turn off throwing damage, which is going to be like throwing stars and rocks. And I did turn off armed melee damage, which is going to be like baseball bats. I left unarmed melee damage, which is your boxing skill, because it was already very difficult to really seriously injure someone with boxing, and I didn't see a reason to remove that. You can change your available respawn points. You can turn off sector and shelter, so it would only be random or leave one on. Your different spawn prices and modifiers on how much more it costs each time you respawn. How long it takes for certain types of respawn points to be available. Cooldown times, which would be how long, how much more time gets added to that waiting period each time you die. Same thing with suicides here. Darkness intensity multiplier, the highest number you can put in here that actually does anything is 999, which is what I have ours set to. It makes our nights pretty bright, but there is still a period of about 20 to 30 minutes where you could benefit from using night vision. You can turn off first person, third person crosshairs, different types of chats. Say, for example, you didn't want to allow private squad chats. You can turn off the map screen, which is an interesting idea. You can limit the number of people that can be on a squad, which I imagine is more useful on a PvP server than a PvE server, so that you don't end up with massive gangs that rule the world. Some other granular settings below that there uh, about squad leader intelligence and increasing squad members with it. Pawn amount modifiers are basically just a dice roll that's added on as an exponent on whatever the game has decided to spawn. So if the game decides to spawn three puppets and then it rolls the dice and it gets a two, it's going to spawn more puppets. Uh, the check-in times. So I don't know if it's changed, but when I first set up our server about six months ago, the Exterior pawn and interior pawn were actually in minutes, even though it says seconds, it was minutes. So these are still set at one. What that means is how long do you have to be in a location before puppets spawn around you? The wild pawn spawning was actually in seconds back then. So these are in one minute, this is 10 minutes. Uh, spawning probabilities is just how likely the game is to spawn puppets at certain spawn locations. The higher the number, the more probability that you're going to have puppets spawn around you at the different spawn locations. You can turn off base building. You can use map-based building restrictions. I turned this off because I want players to be able to build wherever they want, as long as they're not violating the rules, which just state you cannot block loot sources. So you can't block off a police station 
but there's nothing to stop you from building on top of it. Game game multiplier. You can disallow coma. If you do that, then instead of a prisoner becoming comatose, they'll just die. Uh, there's some voting that you can do. You can vote to initiate a cargo drop to set the type of weather and to set the type of day. So you could set it to 8 a.m., 8 p.m. You could set it to rainy or clear. The downside to this is currently only admins can initiate a vote in-game in the chat window. Um, but there are some settings you can change here. My minimum consent is set to 60%. It's a decimal representation, so 100% would be 1, 90% would be 0.9, etc. These are moderately new controls for the kill box. Uh, this one, electrical door unlock failure assistance bonus, is how many seconds get tacked on to your attempt time on your next attempt after failing to open a kill box door. I have turned off the modifiers on gold lock zappers and lock protection because those things already hurt. I don't need them to be worse. Vehicle settings. In my opinion, tractors and wheelbarrows are entirely useless. I can haul both people and logs in my truck. I have the tractor at one because no matter what I did, there would always be one tractor that spawned on my server. So at least this way I feel like I made the choice for that to happen. Wheelbarrows, both the metal ones in the game and the craftable wheelbarrows, take up vehicle slots. As far as I'm aware, there is no hard limit on how many vehicles you can have on a server. Now, don't quote me on that because I don't have a reliable source of information on that. But I will say the more vehicles you have, the more lag you will experience. Fuel drain, I cut in half because... I wanted to get gas less. Battery drain, I turned off, so you can leave the vehicle sit for a few days and not have to worry about the battery being dead. Charge with alternator, I left with one, it charges normally. Charge with dynamo, we don't have dynamos yet, but I imagine at some point we'll have battery chargers. This is a newer setting. You can set how long a vehicle has to sit unused before it is despawned, aka destroyed. Uh, the default setting is seven days. I changed it to 15. Gasoline settings. I have messed with these so many times and I can never quite seem to get them right. I usually end up breaking the gas stations. So I just returned it to its initial values of one across the board. Feel free to play with that, but one seems to work just fine. And lastly, you have world settings where you can actually make a custom map size if you only wanted to use, say, certain blocks of sectors or whatever you'd like to do. I've never seen anyone actually use that, but it is possible. So if you want to make the world a smaller place, feel free. Beyond that, you have your server restarts. Uh, I have two. It just works out well that way. This is to kind of help keep your server running smoothly. You can set this to whatever you want. I have mine set for 9 a.m. and 9 p.m. Backups you'll probably want to do from time to time. In case anything were to happen to your server, you would be able to restore all of your characters and loot and vehicles and whatnot. Uh, I will say on your basic settings here, you have this big red magic button that says delete all save games. This is your server wipe button. Use it wisely and sparingly. I will also say that server wipes can be fun because everybody starts over and it's kind of an exciting time. If you have lots of logs, I wish I could show you the drop down menu, but for some reason it won't appear on the video. You have admin commands that have been input in the chat window. You have login records, you have kill records, you have violation records, you have all kinds of nifty stuff. Uh, the logs can be very engrossing. And lastly, you have permissions, which is allowing other G Portal users access to your server. If you want to let them have the ability to make changes to your settings and such. So that's about it. That is the end of the server settings. And it's been a long enough video, so I guess I'll just uh, catch y'all later. Go hug a bombie.